Welcome back to the Tool Crib. In today's video, we're going to be talking multimeters. And in this video, we're going to do a basic introduction into some of the functions that you'll find common to most every multimeter out there. Now, when it comes to digital multimeters, there are three basic configurations. The first of which is going to be an auto ranging multimeter like this Fluke 117, where we can input our voltages, whether that be AC or DC or amperages AC or DC, and the multimeter will automatically range for us. The next version is going to be a manual ranging like this Klein Tools version, where when we input a voltage, whether that be AC or DC, we have to select a range for it in order to get an accurate reading. And then the third one is a clamp style. The clamp styles are fantastic for checking amperages on a conductor where we don't have to physically take the conductor apart. We don't have to tie in at both ends. We just put the clamp around the conductor and it will automatically read the amperages for us. Now, while these two are a little bit more expensive, we're going to concentrate on this video on more of a budget friendly version like this Klein Tools version, which runs about $35. This one runs about 200. This one's about 150, depending on where you get them and at what time. In today's video, though, we're going to concentrate on more of the budget friendly version and show you the four basic functions that come with pretty much every multimeter out there and some of the things that you can do with them. Now, most quality multimeters are going to come with a good set of test leads. And in this case, we have two Category 3 test leads. Now, Category 3 means that they are covered except for the exposed tip of the test lead. But you can also change those to Category 2 by removing the covers and getting a longer lead here in order to get into tighter spaces. Now, when it comes to plugging them into your multimeter, your multimeter either will have three ports or four ports, depending on the brand and the style of multimeter. The first one, our black common, will always go into the common slot. The other two will depend on what we're measuring. So as an example, if we wanted to measure a voltage, we can see that the V is on this side, so we'll want to set our test lead on this side. The same goes for diodes and ohms and continuity checks. But if we're measuring amperages up to a maximum of 10 amps, then we'll want to set it on this side. So when you're determining which side or where the positive lead needs to go, generally they're going to be written out above the test lead port to tell you where you need to put that positive lead. Now on most multimeters, these ports will be fused. In this case, this port is fused with a 200 milliamp fuse and this port is fused with a 10 amp fuse. That way, in case we see an amperage load greater than those amounts for those particular ports, then the multimeter is protected. And in the case of this Klein, if we open up the back cover, which I've already loosened to access our battery port, then we find our fuses here. This is our 10 amp and this is our 200 milliamp. In some multimeters, it's a little more extensive how you have to get into them in order to access the fuses. The first function that we're going to look at is AC voltage. AC voltage is indicated by the capital V for voltage and then the sine wave next to it, which indicates that it is for AC voltage or alternating current. Alternating current is anything that derives power from an outlet, the stuff that's going to be in your house or in a control panel or a sub panel. Anything that gets power off of the power grid is going to be AC voltage. And we can check that by first setting our common port or a common lead into our common port. And then for our positive lead, we want to set it in the right hand side where it indicates V for voltages for both AC and DC. Now, one tip when checking power, like on an outlet, one thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you're only using one hand in order to check this. And we first want to set our negative lead in our negative port and then set our positive lead in the positive port. And then when we extract those, we extract them in reverse. First pull the positive, then pull the negative. The reason we do that is because if we were to test this with two hands, now there's a potential that electric energy could come through one hand, go through our chest cavity, and then go back out the other lead. And this can get you, this runs a further risk of, of causing a major shock that could go through your chest cavity into your heart. So anytime you can, you want to make sure that you're using one hand. Now, another method that you can use to check AC voltage when doing this to stay a little safer is on the backside, we can slide one lead into 
so a couple of slots. Now, not all multimeters have this, but generally a lot of them do, where you can slide that in, and now we are not touching the lead, and so it's a little easier to work on it. Then we can set our negative, then our positive. Again, extract them in reverse order, and that keeps you a little bit safer. So if I want to check the voltage in this outlet, I'm first going to find my voltage range for AC. In this case, we're going to put it on AC voltage, 200 volts. I'll go ahead and turn the light on so that's a little bit more visible. I'm going to remove my category three covers. I'm going to slide our negative side into the back here so that I can operate this a little more safely. And then we're going to set our negative in our larger slot and then our positive on the smaller slot and we are reading 123.7 volts. So we know that this outlet is producing the right amount of voltage. Now we're gonna be checking a 240 volt outlet. So we have two hot legs of 120 in our 240 volt outlet here. And then we have our ground. So if we wanna test across the two, then we're gonna range this to 600 volts because it's gonna be in excess of 240 or it should be. So we'll set one on one side, we'll set the other on the other side, and we are reading 249 volts. Now, if we wanted to check from the ground to one of the hot legs, then we're gonna range this down to 200 because we should read approximately 120 across them. So we'll put our ground on our ground lead and we'll test each side. In this side, we're getting 125.5, and on the other leg, we get 124.7, 0.6 or 0.7 so we know that this outlet is good as well the next thing that we want to check is dc voltage now to check dc voltage that is going to be the capital v with a line and then a dash line underneath of it to indicate dc voltage or direct current and direct current is any type of electrical current that runs off of a battery whether that be in automotive in your car battery or little 1.5 volts like this one. Now in this particular multimeter, it also has a separate section to check nine volt and 1.5 volt batteries, but we don't necessarily have to do that. So in order to use DC voltage, we're gonna first put it into our DC voltage side. And I've ranged this to 600, so it's not gonna give us a very accurate reading. So if we set these on here and we put our negative lead on our negative side and our positive lead on our positive side, we get a one as an indicator. If we jump down and go to 200, then we're gonna get closer. Now we have 1.6. If we go down to 20, then we'll get 1.68. If we go down to two, this will give us out even further at 1.692. And then if we were to go to 200 millivolts, then we are gonna get an OL or out of limit. So when checking different types of voltages, we want to range our multimeter in the vicinity of where we think our voltages are going to be. And for the most accurate reading, this is a battery that puts out 1.5 volts. So we will want to put that at two, just above where we think our range will be. And that'll give us the most accurate reading. Now, if we reverse these, you'll notice that we get a negative symbol. So this won't hurt the multimeter in direct current, but now we're reading negative 1.5. 692 and all that means is that we have the leads reversed of where they should be and if we switch it around now we get a reading of 1.692 this time positive now if i want to check the voltage to make sure that it is good on my battery on my vehicle then i'm first going to range this onto the dc voltage side we're going to set it at 20 because we're going to be checking a 12 volt system so that is the lowest that we can go without going below the, our estimated voltage. And we can set our negative lead on our negative side and our positive on our positive side. And if the battery's good, it should range between 12.3 and 12.6 volts. And in this case, we have 12.54, so we know that this battery is good. The next thing that we wanna check is continuity. Now, continuity is a very, very valuable a tool to use. It allows you to check to see whether or not a circuit is complete or it has the potential to pass energy. Now, one tip for both working with our ohms and continuity, which is in the same range, is that the 
whatever you're working on has to be de-energized because otherwise you can damage your multimeter. So we want to make sure that you're not connected to power whenever checking ohms. Now, all this does is measure whether or not electrical current can pass through a particular object. For an example, if we were to set our test leads on the wood here, then it has a very high resistance and does not allow electricity to pass through. But if we were to touch the two leads together, now we get an audible signal letting us know that the circuit is complete. What the multimeter does is it sends a small signal from our positive, and then if it reads back on the negative, it knows the circuit is complete. Now, copper wire has a very low resistance and electricity can pass through it very easily. That is why we use copper in electrical connections. So if we were to take this copper wire and we set one side here and the other side here, we know that it is a completed circuit. Now, the next thing that we're going to check is resistance, and that is measured in ohms, and it's on that same scale as our continuity. And we're going to be checking a standard spark plug. Now, this one is new, so it should range out pretty well. Now, most spark plugs are going to have a resistor in them. If they have an R in their number, then they're going to have a resistor inside, and that is to limit electrical interference for stuff like radios. So to check this, we want to first range this up. Now, spark plugs are going to have a range of somewhere between 4,000 and 10,000 ohms. So we want to move this up and dial it in to about 20,000 because that's the next highest number. And to check spark plugs, we actually have to hit the very tip down here and then anywhere up here in order to check what our ohms are. So I'll set this here and then we'll try to get right on the very tip and this is reading at 4.91 or 4,910 ohms of resistance. Our last function is to test amperage and in this particular multimeter it only has the ability to do DC amperage. So we're going to be testing what kind of amp draw we get on this turn signal light. Now to do this we first want to start by setting the positive lead of our battery source to the positive lead of our multimeter and we are going to connect this one to the 10 amp side because we're unsure of what kind of amp draw that we're going to get. Then we can turn our multimeter on, put it on 10 amps and now we can set the are the negative lead over here to the positive side of our light and then connect the other side to see what kind of amp draw we get. And in this case, we're getting 0.55 amps. Now, if we want to check the other filament in here, we can switch it around and check the other side for the brighter light. And we get an amp draw of 2.04, ranging from 2.02 to 2.04. So now we know that it was a good idea to put it on the 10 amp side because otherwise we would have blown the smaller fuse. And those are the basics on how to use a multimeter to troubleshoot electrical problems, both for AC and DC voltages, for amperage, and for resistance and continuity. I appreciate you taking the time to watch, and I'll see you in the next one.